Hey, welcome to Well.com, home of TIG time. Hi, I'm Mr. TIG, and the guys at Spanky's Garage have a project for us, so we're going to go check it out. We're back in Arc City, Kansas, working on this 34 Ford Coupe. I invited uh, my friend Tommy Beckelheimer here. He's working on this car, and uh, we've got several repairs to make on it. And yes, we're elevated because we're up on the roof. And what I can tell you about this roof is that it had the old style roof in it. The old cloth top. It was a cloth top, and, and I remember this, this company came out with a replacement piece of metal that was rolled out, <clears throat> used it for a template, and welded it in. So it's now hard top. Awesome. And uh, I, you know, I noticed that there's something uh, on the top of this that you want to get repaired. I do, Wyatt. Uh, there is some spots. I mean, it's going to take some work, but some of these places are rather thin. Some of these where these weld areas have been. Uh, there's a couple of techniques we could use to repair this. We'll use, um, I understand that you're good with the old school letting technique. So I'd like to get you to do that versus using Bondo or, or mud, some people might call it, or, or plastic. Okay. Uh, and let's use the, let's use the uh, letting technique, see how, see how it turns out. And the smoother we can get this before we turn it over to the body people, to the body shop, the less work they'll have to do. Yeah, the less money we'll have to spend on getting it repaired. Okay, and, and you know, I mean, I've done the letting process for actually quite a few years. It doesn't get used very often. But, no, it's, uh, uh, it's a lost art. It's, it, that's a shame. It's such a neat art. Yes. Now, the, the new stuff that's out, and, and I say new, I mean the, the techniques that are used now. What's the fear factor of putting the Bondo type uh, materials in here? It, it, can, it can crack, or, or um, or solvents or, or uh, materials could seep up through the, the metal that were left on there that didn't get cleaned off. They can seep up through there and eventually your paint will begin to pop or peel or, or get some kind of noticeable effect to it where you won't, you won't want that. I think the letting technique will take care of all of that. Uh, we won't have to worry about it. Great. So can, can you get this down to bare metal for me and then I'll, uh, I certainly I'll, can. I'll start the process. Certainly can. Let me get my... Uh, Tools up here, we'll get on it. All right, Mr. T, I got about a six inch diameter around the spot we want to work there. Will that, down to the bare metal, will that be enough? I think it looks good, Tommy. All right. I'll turn it over to you. All right. Okay, the, the first part of this is getting it clean, and you'll hear that from everybody that's ever done, you know, letting. Yeah, so I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to use my easy wipe and wipe it down. Get any res residual dust or graining dust or any particles. And you, you can see that the, the area that I'm, I'm affecting is about a six to eight inch in diameter. Now the reality is I only need to get about this one little inch and a half spot taken care of, but before you do any letting whatsoever, you gotta do what's called a tinning process. And tinning is, I don't know, it's, it's, it's a version of fluxing the area. And so there's actually what's called tinning butter, and it doesn't look like butter. It actually looks like some very, very soft liquidized uh, tin lead. Look at that color. Anyway, you just brush it on in the area that you want to tin. Now, you got to do this if you want the lead to stick. Uh, otherwise, you'll have a tough time with the lead. And I don't know that there's a, a, a terribly right or wrong how you apply this. I've never, I've never had a problem with it. But uh, anyway, all of this material is readily available still. You just have to know that it's there. And when I say there, I contacted, oh, I just went to this catalog. I went to the uh, Eastwood catalog and got this kit. So it's got tinning butter. Um, it's got uh, lead. Now the lead itself, uh, this comes in a quarter pound sticks. And uh, anyway, you look on the lead and it says 7030. It's actually marked in there. What is that? Okay, well that's, you know, 70% lead, 30% tin. Uh, so anyway, what's going to happen is I'm not I'm not going to even do this process until after I've I've done this first process with the butter. So here's what I need to do. I, I need to have a heat source, and that heat source 
can be just about anything. You know, I, I have oxygen acetylene right here, and I can, uh, I can take the torch and make a neutral flame, but you gotta be real careful because oxygen and acetylene is pretty hot. So I happen to have, I just have a little bottle of propane. You know, I mean, I've used this for everything from sweating pipes to things like that. Um, I'll go ahead and put my safety glasses on. You're not gonna need anything other than just some, some eye safety wear on this. It doesn't put out a huge brightness to it. Oh, I still got some propane left, so. And I'll just kind of melt this in. You'll, you'll see it start to bubble a little bit. And I'm hitting a, hitting cold metal, so right in the beginning, yeah, you can see that it takes takes quite a bit of heat. But just kind of swirl it around. Just be patient with it. If if you've done any gas brazing or anything like that, then uh, You'll, you'll do this real well. Hey guys, this episode of Take Time is brought to you by Napotnik Welding Supplies. And I'm in the showroom and I can tell you that they've got all kinds of welding equipment and supplies from all the major brands. They have monthly specials. And if you'd like those monthly specials sent to you in your email, simply click on the link. Now let's get back to welding. Click on the link. <laughs> kind of feel the area around it. This is still cold. Okay, now I think it's starting to heat up enough where I can melt just a little bit of this. And you, you actually just kind of gob it on, just dab it on. Uh, and how you get the shape is we're gonna use this, uh, this paddle here. It's a wooden paddle, you know, and it's just got kind of a funny shape. It's got a flat surface to it. So sometimes you can get creative and use other devices. But uh, anyway, so I'm just gonna put You can see it melts real easy. It flows real easy, and I can even see the low spots. Okay, now, while it's liquid, I can move this around. And it's still running liquid. Got a little low spot here, so I'm going to try to melt it right on. Okay, see how it's starting to wet out very nicely. I'm taking the paddle, filling it in. That's it, we're done. Now like Tommy was saying, you can take Bondo and you can get very, very close with it. This, this material is in a metal form right now. It'll get into the solid form. And I'm not gonna do too much on it because it's still just a little bit warm. But you can take these, it looks like a cheese grater. But you can use this for soft materials like aluminums and bronzes and things like that and you can just actually shave it off. And you can start carving exactly. I'm not gonna do the whole finished job right here, but you can see the, the chips that come off. And it just takes that, a little bit of patience and, 
you know, once you do this a couple of times, you are an expert. I mean, you just have to kind of get used to how liquid you want things to go. Uh, but anyway, this is uh, absolutely the best way to, to restore this car. Again, 1934 Ford. So I'm going to invite Tommy over and see if this is good enough, and he'll end up working it out the rest of the way. So, so Tommy, why don't you go over and take a look at this. Okay. Uh, I can see that it's going to work pretty good. We'll, um, we'll do some more uh, sanding on it here with the grater and, uh, and go from there. But it looks like the process is going to work pretty good. Thank you for watching TIG Time by Mr. TIG. To stay up with the latest TIG welding technology and education, subscribe by clicking the button below.